10 chess things every amateur should know. I say things rather than tactics because some of them aren't tactics. Uh, first of all, the new theme songs that I'm going to be putting on are based on a play I wrote and I just plugged the one tune in and it dazzles. It does put all this dazzling crap on. So now I'll have all these flashy theme song openings. Might as well, right? It's a fun sounding little thing. Uh, sorry, there's no diagrams for this because I don't have the time or the um, expertise. And uh, yeah, and my rating, uh, my chess rating is probably between 1450 and 1650, which would make me pretty average. Uh, a beginner would be 1250, an expert would be 20, 2000 and up. So th this advice I'm giving is really just for people who aren't even amateurs and they want to become am amateurs. And it would be useless to anybody who can actually play. Uh, Chess.com. Oh, first of all, my years of experience. I've been playing for 30 years, but I've only been studying it seriously for the last three years. And I've improved immeasurably because of that. Because like everything else, if you don't study it, there's a limit to how good you can get. A huge limit. It applies to tennis. It applies to every single thing that you could ever, any endeavor you could ever uh, endeavor upon. Okay, chess.com is the most valuable resource you could ever imagine. Uh, chess lends itself very nicely to structured um, study uh, for, to have resources. If you were learning another language, you would not have, you'll never find a resource that is as good for learning language as uh, chess.com is for learning chess. They've got everything there. You can find out exactly where you rank among the two million odd players you can find out your exact ranking you can you can look at every single game any player has ever played including some of the grand masters the best people in the world because they're most of them are on there you can watch their games you can rewatch their games you can you can download your own games you can share your games it's just incredible i've never seen anything like it i've never seen a subject be so thoroughly explored as as chess.com does because chess lends itself to that because chess, chess is such a logical uh, thing that's so easy to measure. Um, you can also don't download an app, and you can play people online all over the world. You can play five-minute games. You can play as, as you can cater. You can um, tailor make the game in terms of how long you want it to be, etc. Okay, so here's some tactics. If your opponent only has one bishop, you're, you're basically you have a black bishop and a white bishop. And if your opponent only has one bishop let's say it's a white bishop, then you want to put every piece you have on, on a black square because that will render uh, the other the opponent's bishop useless. Everybody should know that because, yeah, it's just it's indispensable. And your, your, your rating will go up 50 points just for knowing that. Um, knights, okay. A knight versus any piece other than a knight, oh, even a knight. If you can be two diagonals away from the knight, so let's say the coordinates coordinates are alphabetical horizontally and vertical uh, sorry vertically they're numer numer numerical numer um, so if you can be on say a3 a1 and the knight is on c3 it will take the knight like five moves or four moves to threaten you so if you want to if you want to avoid the knight try to get two diagonals away from him and you'll be fine for the foreseeable future that's also indispensable, and your rating will 50 points at least if you don't didn't know it beforehand. It will improve. Opposition, I can't really get into this because books have written, been written about it. It's an endgame thing. It's just about keeping the momentum, keeping the initiative over the opponent. It's a king versus king situation. Uh, opposition. Uh, triangulation is something you do generally to gain opposition, and it's something you need to know. And it's, I still don't fully understand opposition or triangulation because they're very complicated, but there's something that it's just good to have a, a general idea of them and, and you can look it up and find it out very, very easily. So remember opposition and triangulation, they're related and they, they relate to um, end game. Doubled pawns, that's a pawn in front of the other pawn on the same file. That is a, a bad thing. You don't want it. And if you can get the other person to double his pawns, you want to do that in general. It's not always bad, but in general it's bad. The way I look, I look at it is it's like music where a dissonance is often good, but it has to resolve. 
it's good if it resolves. Double pawns are good if they resolve into, you know, they undouble eventually. And they're worse on the end, on the edges, on the sides. They're better in the center because they can control more spaces. And if you look that up, you'll find numerous examples of why doubled pawns are a terrible thing to, to have. Um, rooks, rooks, that would be castles, are powerful. They're the most powerful on the seventh rank. So on the seven or two um, rank. Because they do the most damage and they threaten the king the most. So if you bear that in mind, again, rating will soar. Black, uh, oh, this is this was very interesting, which I only found out about two or three years ago. White plays for the win. Black generally plays for a draw. That's considered to be good. If black, if you can draw as black, that's not bad at all. Only the like best of the best, Bobby Fischer would would try to win generally. I mean, if you're better than your opponent, then you should play for a win if you're black. But if you're equal, you should be happy with a draw. And because white, because white moves first, that's the that's the reason, um, and that's also why chess openings. You know, there's a list of you know, there's a lot of openings. There's the Italian opening, um, the E4 opening, the Rui Lopez, um, the Danish, the uh, the French, the English, uh, the Cis- well, no, not the Sicilian. So these are all openings, and they're all openings refer to what white does. Black, the way black plays during the opening game, it's always called a defense. So the Sicilian defense is um, is what black does in response. So whenever you hear about a defense, it's always referring to black. When you hear about an opening, it's white. Um, we're almost done here. You uh, generally should only sacrifice a piece, and a piece doesn't refer to pawns, it refers to like a bishop or a knight or a rook or a queen. You only want to sacrifice a piece generally if you have some sort of plan to attack the king immediately. And generally you should only be attacking the king immediately if you've got at least two if not three pieces ready to coordinate an attack immediately. So you're not going to sacrifice a piece unless you've got three pieces bearing down on the king. Generally, that's the idea. Of course, there's exceptions to everything. You generally want to capture, especially with with pawns, you want to capture towards the center. Center control is a major thing. Now, of course, sometimes in some openings in some uh, games, you'll give you'll allow the opponent to have center control, and you'll give that up in order to flank him on the left or the right on on the sides. But that's more complex. That's way more complex than any amateur should be aiming toward. So, yeah, if you just want to be a, a good amateur, aim towards the center, capture towards the center, try to dominate the center. That's about it. If you like this, subscribe. Yeah, you subscribe and uh, like it and comment. And let me know if, if this is useful at all because I, I'll make more. I intend to get better in the coming couple of years, so I wouldn't mind... Uh, at all sharing some of the some of the um, some of the very small uh, low intermediate um, knowledge that I accrue okay take care bye